So, what is up everybody? We are back on the modded weirdo server. And yeah, I made some progress actually. I also did a live stream the other day. And I actually got a power source. So I just hooked up a lava generator to this um, transfer node right here. Which actually extracts liquid and put it inside this one. So it will generate... Um, energy and I was able to use the item fabricator and the pulverizer. So what does it mean? I just went to the nether and gathered some nether quartz and actually I got silk touch. So I just got the bare O ore and not the actual nether quartz. So what I did, I just put in the nether quartz and the pulverizer and it pulverized it down for me and I got a higher outcome. So I don't get only one ever quartz per um, ore, I get two instead, which is quite good. And this one is just a machine I needed to make this baby over here. The storehouse. It's actually amazing. It's like a chest, a giant chest with a search bar in it. So if I type in cobblestone, it will show me everything with the word cobble in it. Actually, I don't, I only have cobblestone yet in this, so yeah. Um, and what I want to do is make myself a fluid transposer because I also want to make pyrophium dust. So what does it mean? I just um, want to get a blazing pyrophium bucket and to do this I will need the fluid transposer. That's actually basically it. And how to craft it is we need a machine frame. I already prepared the glass over here. So I can get some of those. We actually need two more. So let's grab the other ingredients. We need... Um, I actually also find some uh, found some ardite in the nether. And... Where's my iron? You know what? Let's just um, put the stuff in the storehouse. Because why shouldn't I use it since I got it? This thing is amazing. I love it so much. Oops. <laughs> I always accidentally type something in. And there's my iron. <laughs> and the golden bag of holding. So let's grab some more of those glass. And I also put the nether quartz in here. And I also got three river skeleton skulls. Because uh, I think it was Jeffy Jeff got a... A skull plant so it grows river skeleton skulls so I restore these for a river fight later on and I got eight blocks left which is quite cool let's eat some carrots and now we make a machine frame so first of all we need a t uh, gear out of tin there's some tin one two three four <laughs> I was about to count in, e in German. <laughs> um, let's get ourselves the tin gear because we will need this. And now we can click this thing. So this is the crafting recipe for the basic machine frame. I, and I can shift click this question mark. And if I have everything, it will automatically um, put the ingredients in here. And I can just put and get it out. And there they go. The zombie flesh just turned into monster jerky. So what else do we need? We need a redstone reception coil. We just make these by getting some <laughs> redstone and some gold. Where's my redstone? Oh, there's some. I also got some in my golden bag of holding. And I got some in my inventory. Never mind. So there's our redstone reception coil. We need two copper gears. Let's get some copper. <laughs> I always type in it because I want to press E to close the inventory. And we need two of those. Like this. And two more glass. The bucket I got already on me. So let's get some of this. A nice glass. Actually, you can put in sand into the smeltery, uh, but it won't double. 
but you will get clear glass from it. And since I got silky, I can simply break the glass without losing it. So we just need one more block to make this thing. And I think this actually also needs um, energy. So for those of you who didn't understand what this does, it's quite in, uh, simple. It transports liquid um, between containers or you can store a little bit of liquid in it. And we want to put the pyrophium dust in the liquid, in the fluid transposer, I think it's called. Where is it? Yeah, like this. We just get the blazing pyrophium from melting down this uh, from melting down this pyrophium dust. Yep, I will show you in a second what I mean by that. And I think we actually got everything. So now I should be able to shift click the question mark and there we go. There's our fluid transposer. Since I don't need the item fabricator anymore, I could just replace it with this guy and it fills up with power because this thing is right next to it. So as you can see, this is actually how power works. And I don't want any of the automatically outputs. It's not important yet and I can toggle between emptying out and filling up stuff. <laughs> and again, the zombie parade is coming in. So what we now need is blazing pyrophium as well as a magma crucible. There it is. Um, wait, what? Oh, we just did a lead sto lead stone energy cell frame. So let's do this on camera. Um, I'm wondering if I can craft this stuff and put it in the smeltery and get it out and put it in uh, this guy. I got molten ender currently in it and get it out with a transfer node for liquids. By the way, I, 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 sw I swapped the transfer node with the faucet so it will pull it out for me automatically so I don't have to right click the faucet all the time. Yeah. DJ411 shows items, stone hammer. How am I? How do I show this stuff? T? I don't know. <laughs> okay, so let's make the stuff. We need pulverized coal, and we got the pulverizer, so we can simply put in coal. Um, where's coal? Let's put this stuff in here. Let's make more of them, like four pieces of them. I really love this pyrophium dust. Blaze powder, we need blaze rods, which is actually no problem at all. We got these blazing cactoids. Mm, we just use the furnace to cook them up. I think it's like, oh no, I think, is it like this? No. Let's see. So we make blaze. Oh, this is how it's made. So three blaze nuggets make one blaze watch. Let's do this. I just put in eight. So it uses exactly one core. Very well. And we need uh, three of those ingots to get this stuff. So let me speed it up real quick for you. So there we go, this is our final blaze nugget. Let's do it like this. So we get ourselves a blaze rod and there we go. And we just need redstone, so I think we can just put them in like this. Yep, and that's actually our pyrophium dust. Let's get some of those pulverized coal. There we go. It's just ready for me to use. And we got pyrophium dust. Let's see if we actually can put it in right here. So it looks like it's working, but I'm actually not quite sure. I think I will have to make um, some more glass so I can make more of those sear tanks. 
Let's see. Because I need a way to store my fluids. <laughs> so let me get some more stuff done and craft together and I'll be right back. Okay guys, I just made some more automation over here. As you can see, I am automatically getting the ingots out of the, out of the crafting... Uh, what am I saying? Not crafting table, casting table it is. Um, it will be pulled by this transfer node and put into this chest automatically. So now we have our blazing pyrophium in here. And we just put it into this here tank, I think. There we go. This is our blazing pyrophium. But I will need some more of this stuff. So I will have to cook some more up. Okay, we got some more pyrophium dust. Woohoo. Let's just put it in over here. And this thing is making inva automatically. And we just got molten glass in there. Which isn't good at all. But there's an easy way to fix this. We just grab the... Oh no. You know what? We don't have to use this casting basin. I got another one from my village I found. So there it is. We just put it in here. And... I really wish having those filters right now from thermal dynamics because I could just put it uh, over here. So every fruit is going to be in this thing, but I can tell that glass is going to be in this one. And this, I just got really frame rate issues. So I think the legs are now fixed and as you can see, for a blink of an eye, there was a blazing pyrophium and this wandered into here. We'll just put back inside here and we need 200 millibuckets more of this stuff. There we go. Shouldn't be a problem at all because we now got all of this. So there we go. I just don't have any pulverized coal left so let's make some more. <laughs> okay. So we just put it in the pulverizer. Oh, that actually went really fast. Because it's a hardened one. And there we go. There's our pyrophium dust. So I will just put it back in here. And let's speed it again up for you. So there we go. It is almost done. Let's see, come on. It actually took a really long time. Oh, and it... There we go. There's our bucket of blazing pyrophium. And what I was just thinking about, we actually don't need the fluid transposer. We can just use a bucket and right click it. <laughs> there we go. There's our blazing pyrophium. So, I was asking Paddy if he still got the torch under the crucible, and I know that this thing is really great when it comes to crucibles, because it got a melting speed of, I think, 10? I don't know. <laughs> I might be wrong there. So, let's just replace the lava with this. But I will need another bucket for it. Or oh, it was 8, I think. 10 would be a little bit fast. Oh my goodness, it's seven actually. Yup, it's seven. Which is actually really fast. Wow. <laughs> Love it. It's a lot faster than lava. So let's make a mini chest and go over to Paddy's base. I actually want to wait till Paddy's gone. <laughs> because... It's ought to be a little bit of a surprise, but in the meantime, I can just do some more stuff, like um, getting rid of the whole mountain, or not of the whole mountain, but as you can see, I just mined out this circle right here, and I want to mine the circle out to the very top of these mountains, 
So let's do this. And because I got a hammer, it should go really quick and it should upgrade a few times while doing this. Because yes, Iguana Tricks installed. If you don't know what it does, it's actually quite simple. Um, whilst mining, you will gain XP, as you can see. There's mining XP and skill XP. These will increase over time. And if you get a level, uh, if you get a new skill level, you will receive a Nava modifier and a random modifier. So you got one room to put in your own defined modifier, and you will get one randomly. So the best um, example is the sword I call Jigglypuff, and it actually got beheading, knockback, bane of arthropods, and auto repair. Just, fi uh, just from fighting mobs. As you can see, the skill level is expert, and this one is just clumsy. So that's actually how Iguana Tweaks uh, works. Okay, so I am now above my base, actually, and I laid down another circle. So this is actually where my base will be. Well, this is actually how high my base will be. So I'll have to mine the entire area out, which is inside this cobblestone circle. <laughs> Luckily I got a lumber axe and an excavator and a hammer to do that. So it should be actually really quick. If you're wondering what an excavator is, it's like a 3x3 shovel. And the lumber axe just cuts down the whole tree at once. And the stone ha and the hammer is actually the same for stone materials. So a 3x3 area for stone. <laughs> and yeah, let me do this and then I'll be right back. Since I don't have an option to record a time lapse in third person, I will do this off camera. Because the replay mod I think is only for 1.8 and I couldn't I wouldn't be able to install it anyways. And spectator mode doesn't exist in 1.7 yet. So would be a heck of a lot of fun doing a timeless out of it. But never mind, let's get to work. Okay guys, one day has been passed and look at this. One of the mountains is done apart from the tree thing over there. <laughs> I'll remind it out in the future. But for now, I think that's going to be it for today's episode. Hopefully you had fun watching. If you did, please make sure to hit that like button. And if you want to see more videos like that, you can truly subscribe to me. That's everything from me, Imunadeo, and I'm about.